yeah, definitely when I when I entered the mission field, I, um, you know, of course had lots of hopes for, you know, baptizing a lot of people, helping a lot of people realize how uh, amazing the gospel is and helping improve people's lives. Um, and I know that um, some areas for me were more challenging than others to at least get people to commit to things. That's probably one of the uh, biggest challenges that just like wherever I was really um, just kind of, you know, people, you know, people love to listen to you. Uh, they love to hear what you have to say. And especially if you, you know, serve them and help them with something, they, they open the door for you. Um, but, you know, um, having them, you know, commit to uh, reading from the Book of Mormon, praying about it, or especially going to church. That's, you know, attending sacrament meeting each week. That's often a very uh, challenging one for people. Sometimes transportation is an issue, things like that. Um, but, but yeah, um, what was interesting is that um, I... I had success in different ways, oddly enough. Um, of course, I will always remember, you know, a couple of families that were those golden investigator families. You know, one there was one out in uh, this area called Toflakai, which is just north of Gallup, New Mexico. Um, so uh, my uh, my companion and his my my companion and I had had run into them, and um, after a few interactions with them, they just pretty much accepted the gospel right there. They had no concerns about being baptized. Uh, they, and they're active to this day. I know that I've had some contact with them. Um, uh, so, um, those kind of experiences are amazing. Just realizing that you work really hard and you, you try to anticipate what concerns the investigators might have. And, um, sometimes you're just lucky enough to have people who accept the truth, um, and just, uh, no matter what, and just go for it. Um, and press forward. So, um, I definitely had, uh, I definitely saw some success that way, which was, um, amazing, unforgettable. Um, I, some, uh, I do remember, you know, there were a lot of part member families, definitely. Um, a, a common situation was either a mother or the, or the father, usually one or the other, sometimes both, usually one or the other, would have been baptized in the church and they'd be less active. And they'd see the missionaries and realize, oh, I, I want my children to be baptized because you can't get to heaven unless you get baptized, right? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of situations where the parents would ask um, us, the missionaries, to teach their children so their children can get baptized and so they can go to heaven as well. Um, but, um, yeah, realizing that there'd be no point in baptizing the children if the, if they were going to be less active like their parents. Um, uh, my companion and I always, you know, stressed how important it was for the parents to bring the children to church, to go to the church as a family, and to commit to the gospel together. And so, even though um, it seemed uh, like we were focusing on the on the, the kids, we were also making sure that the whole family was being taught as well. And I can think of, at, like, at least three or four families right right now that um, became activated um, while I was uh, in the area because of that. The parents went to church, the parents took their children to church, and uh, their children got baptized, of course, just like they wanted. <clears throat> but uh, especially because of the Indian placement program, that part member family situation happens a lot. Um, and so uh, I know Preach My Gospel says, you know, the gospel blesses families and that it's important to teach family units. And I know that is definitely important. I know for sure um, that that's something you should definitely focus on at all times. Even if not everyone is interested, even though one of the parents might not be interested or not all the siblings, still, t you know, do all, do all you can to teach those who are interested and, um, you know, hope that everyone in the house hears you and feels the spirit as well. So, yeah, definitely had a lot of success that way. Um, that area just north of Gallup in Toflakai, it was called. Um, that's where I had the most success as far as baptisms and reactivation went um, because of that, because of teaching families and encouraging families to come into the gospel together. Um, let's see. I, uh, I do remember, um, I do remember there's one investigator that, um, uh, she was baptized, um, and it seemed to me and to everyone involved like it was a miracle. This was an 80, 88-year-old woman, actually. Her daughter was a member of the church and had been reactivated into the church like five years before or something like that. And 
so um, the daughter of this um, old woman um, down in Holbrook, Arizona, uh, they, she wanted us to, you know, come and, and, and teach her. And this, this, this lady was, uh, she was a Methodist all her life, all her 88 years of life. She was, you know, in the, you know, in this other wonderful Christian denomination. And we had one, we had good lessons um, and she accepted everything we were teaching her and, um, and then, you know, it kind of came to a point where not much progress is being made, like, um, as far as, like, you know, the commitment to be baptized. And uh, we were also kind of weren't sure, and the daughter wasn't sure, you know, whether or not, you know, this lady would accept the challenge to be baptized. But there was a lesson after we showed a, a church video um, about Jesus Christ that she had made a decision to be baptized. Um, There's a lot of prayer and a lot that, that went into that um, on her part and on our part as well. And I just, like that moment when I, after I asked her, you know, do you, will you be, will you follow the example of Jesus Christ and be baptized? She said, yes, I, I want to join. And I was just like, uh, to me and to the daughter, it's just a miracle to us. It was amazing. Um, and so um, just, you know, moments like, moments like that um, remind you of how much, uh, how much the Lord is helping you and have success. Um, and I truly believe that, um, you know, even, you know, uh, even though some areas may baptize more than others, some missions may baptize more people than others. Um, I am very grateful for what Preach My Gospel says. Um, I think it's, yeah, at the end of chapter one of Preach My Gospel says what a successful missionary is. Um, just in short, a successful missionary loves the Lord and serves him the very best that he or she can. And um, because I feel that I did that on my mission, I feel that I was a successful missionary. And um, so, yeah, success comes in many ways. Um, uh, there have been several people that uh, I wanted so much to accept the gospel and they were making great progress. But for one reason or another, would just kind of uh, shut us away, shut us off. And um, those moments when investigators don't keep commitments or um, or for one reason or another just decide to stop interactions with us, those can be very disappointing, sometimes devastating in the moment. But um, um, but I, I never really felt discouraged. I just knew that, you know, God is, you know, God is always involved in this work and that those who are ready to receive the gospel will receive it. Those who are not ready, those who choose not to accept it now, um, they'll have more opportunities to, um, to, do, to do so in the future.